Golden State's met here in Philadelphia to iron out differences that threaten to destroy the nation. And when the Constitutional Convention hit a perilous deadlock, it was Benjamin Franklin who stood up and said, God governs in the affairs of men. Is it probable that an empire can rise without his aid? Mr. Franklin took a deep and abiding interest in the affairs of faith. And be bowed before your throne, O God. It's not an accident that they signed the Declaration of Independence in Philadelphia. It was the fastest growing city in North America because of its religious diversity. In fact, another little history lesson here. St. Mary's Catholic Church, founded in 1763 here on 4th and Locust, was the site of the first public religious commemoration of the Declaration of Independence. As Americans, most of us believe that there is a higher power, and when we are in prayer, we want that higher power to help us discern that meaning. So, if so many people believe, what's wrong with a day of prayer? Joining me now are Father Jonathan Morris and Margaret Downey from Free Thought Society. Thank you to both for joining us tonight. Thanks for having us. Father Morris, I want to start with you. You say the National sure. Day of Prayer isn't about religion. What is it about? That's exactly right, Thomas. It certainly is not about the government promoting one religious denomination or one religion over another. The government is not supposed to do that. It's supposed to be protecting the free exercise of religion, however. And that's what they're doing here. They're giving us a platform, all of us a platform, whether we take it or not, to express things that are very dear to us. And right as we saw in that great introduction tonight, one of those things is a recognition of an all-powerful supreme being of whose help we really need as a country. And so we need to be respectful of those who don't believe but let's not try to wipe out the name and the face of God from the public square. You know, Margaret, a very good, idea very good point. Founders. Margaret, what's wrong with a day of faith? They're not saying you have to believe or even participate. Look, I have no problem if there wants to. There, there is a um, piety parade. Just don't ask Congress to carry the parade banner, and don't ask our president to be the grand marshal of that parade. Uh, we have a citizenship here in America that embraces non-believers as well as believers. And a national day of prayer divides and separates us, those that believe and those that don't believe. There's nothing wrong with prayer. People do it all the time. Um, but the Bible even says prayer in a public square, prayer on the street corners, is an abomination. It is a symbolism of hypocrisy. And those that are true believers would pray in their closets. Refer to Matthew 5, verses 5 You know, six. I want to talk about something that has been controversial as well, Father Morris. Evangelist Franklin Graham had his invitation to a prayer service withdrawn at the Pentagon because of comments he made about Islam. Do you think religion is getting too political? As long as there are human beings involved in religion, it's always going to be a little bit off. Because religion is man, man and woman's expression of spirituality, of faith. Let me say that that edition of the Bible that Margaret mentioned, I've never heard of it before, that translation. But let me say that without a doubt, a day of national prayer is an invitation to those who like to be part of it. But nobody should be forced to, and thank God the government is not forcing anyone. If the National Day of Prayer is somehow dividing us, this National Day of Reason that some of these atheist groups have put on for today, talk about divisive. Margaret, there are dozens of national holidays. Not everyone participates in them all. Why can't people who just don't believe go on with the day? The problem is government endorsement. Government giving a um, entanglement of religion and government is harmful to all citizens of the United States. Our Constitution protects all of us, and when the government declares a national day of prayer, they're actually showing favoritism. We really don't want that to continue. Fortunately, we won in the Seventh Circuit about stopping the national day of prayer as unconstitutional, and we'll continue that fight. Father Morris, final 30 seconds. Sure, let me say, it was a crazy court decision that will not be upheld, I can guarantee you. Secondly, let's get rid of Thanksgiving Day, let's get rid of all the documents of the Founding Fathers that express so, a, publicly their recognition of a higher power, or let's just start a new country, because getting rid of the name and face of God from this country would be stuck.
starting a new country. Shaking your head, Margaret, final 10 seconds, I'll give to you. No, we love this country, we love the diversity, we want to see all citizens happily participating in all events. Um, we just don't want the government to endorse religion or a national day of prayer. And let's all try to find the things that we have in common. We all believe in the same things. We non-believers just don't believe in a God. Uh, once again, the Justice Department is appealing a ruling by a U.S. District Judge saying National Day of Prayer is unconstitutional. Father Morris, Margaret Downey, thanks for joining us. Thank, Thank you, you, guys.